So how much RAM do we actually need in smartphones? That depends on a lot of different factors. But in the Android world, the average is anywhere from four to eight gigabytes. Four gigabytes if you're a budget device, or if you're a Samsung flagship, you might even use 12 gigabytes. I tested three different phones side by side just to see what would happen. You have a four gigabyte RAM Realme Q. Moving on to the Redmi K20 Pro, a flagship killer, with six gigabytes of RAM, and then the Realme X2 Pro, another flagship killer with eight gigabytes of RAM. The amount of RAM you have isn't really important, it's the amount of RAM that the system needs. Different operating systems need different amounts. iOS typically requires less RAM, and that's why even in the iPhone 11 Pro Max, you only get three gigabytes. Whereas Android uses more, and so in Samsung flagship phones, they give you 12 gigabytes, but is 12 gigabytes really needed? I opened 12 system apps on each phone all around the same time. This isn't a speed test, but I was actually surprised how the Realme Q, which really is a budget device, kept up with the other two, what you would call flagship killers. I definitely found that the more expensive processors in both the K20 Pro and the Realme X2 Pro made the whole thing a lot easier, a lot smoother, and a lot crisper to use. The 12 apps are made up of everyday things like message applications, social media, but most of them are quite heavy intensive gaming apps. As I flick back through all of the apps just testing the RAM, I was actually fairly surprised to see that the Realme Q with only four gigabytes of RAM on Android was actually keeping up with the other two. The only thing that I found different between using the three phones was how the Redmi K20 Pro and the Realme X2 Pro just flicked in and out of screens so much quicker than the Realme Q. But this might have been a difference in processors and not necessarily the RAM. Even flicking back through the big games like PUBG, Subway Surfers as well, these were kept open in all of the phones from four gigabytes even to eight gigabytes. Then flicking through to the smaller applications, which if RAM was becoming constrained, they would be closed down. Going through Baidu, which is a search application, QQ Music, which often gets shut down if RAM is low. As you can see, it was still in memory on all of the phones. Going through to Taobao, which is a shopping application, and iQIYI, which is the Chinese version of Netflix. This is the first time that the four gigabyte Realme Q actually had to reload the app. You can see the black loading screen on iQIYI. So it seems like the four gigabyte phone is just starting to struggle. Then going through to the last two, Weibo, which is like Instagram. Unfortunately, there is an advert screen, but you can tell that it did have to also reload Weibo. So this is by no means the most scientific test and definitely the Realme Q being a really budget device was definitely slower and felt a bit more sluggish in the way it flicked through screens and opened apps and flicked in and out of apps compared to the other two. But in terms of apps being actually kept in memory and ready to be opened, it did really well against the two flagship killers. So how much RAM do we really need in smartphones? Well, if you're buying more expensive phones anyway, they will come with six gigabytes of RAM. And it seems like six gigabytes of RAM is definitely enough for everyday usage. But the more you pay for a phone, the more you expect a lot of headroom and a lot of bang for your buck. And so that extra two gigabytes, even though it may not make much difference, is something that the manufacturers have to give you to justify charging you so much more for their flagships. Subscribe for the latest tech news and tech information. That's it for now, but I'll see you in the next one.